it sends there. The numbers are out for Apple. Let's go back to Ashley. Ashley, I see it rising after hours. That must it be is. good numbers. Well, David, let's start with the earnings per share estimate 188 coming in at 196. Revenue estimate of 51 billion. The actual was 51.5. So just a slight beat on the uh, revenue. iPhone sales coming in at 48 million, which is right in line with, with uh, what was expected. International sales up 62 percent. We're trying to break down the China numbers for you right now. All right. Uh, let me go to Angelo first. What about those uh, iPhone sales? 48 million. Yeah, I think that's I think that's good. I think the concern was um, for the, the September quarter because we were only getting two days of the the 6s relative to last year where we were getting nine days um, in the September quarter so when we look at the 48 million here I think that's a great number um, more importantly on the EPS side I think it given the beat that we're seeing there it probably points to upside on the gross margin side um, but you know I haven't seen the numbers myself okay. it's it's moderating a little bit after hours the stock pop go ahead Melissa all right Angelo stick around let's bring in the rest of the panel Jonathan Honig Jason Rotman and Jason Abrizis is with us as well Jason give me your reaction I mean, that's a solid. That's a solid report. That's exactly what Apple is probably hoping for. I mean, the 48 uh, you know, million number is a monster number in a quarter before they're about to release a whole new, a whole new line of phones. Jason Rotman. Bullish. <laughs> Listen, do not short Apple unless there's some like m m micro minute day trader. This is a company that's very strong. Tim Cook is very bullish. China. China is going to grow. Apple's Apple is going to yeah. continue to rise. Jonathan, do I, we care I, about I, the watch details? I mean, everybody has been so focused on this watch and trying to create a new product and a new category and how they don't want to give us the details and we're not impressed with it. How do you feel about that? Is that a sideshow? No, they are. I think investors are looking at the watch, Melissa. That's one reason why the stock is up on this beat, but it's up, what, barely even half percent in the after hours. Stocks are always forward looking. So the fact the iPhone number, and of course, this is an iPhone company right now, the fact the iPhone number is, is it beats okay. is terrific. But what about looking forward, whether it's the watch or the car? That's what makes a stock go up long term, looking forward, okay. not looking at the present. It's so, also good insight into what's going on in China. And Joe, I want to bring you in. Like, what, what details are we getting on that? Yeah, the China numbers are pretty strong. $12.52 billion is how much they generated out of the People's Republic. It continues to do pretty well. If you look year over year, it's up by 99%. Not quite as strong as the pop that we saw of 112% in the previous quarter. But what we're seeing is the growth in China maybe impacting the growth of iPhone sales uh, for Apple. But overall, pretty strong. But we didn't get numbers from the Apple Watch, by the way. No, uh, no, I know. Yeah, we're, we're waiting still, right? Or we're not even sure they're going to give it, you know, break it, it out for it us. It appears that they're not going to break it out. You know, that was their first new hardware product since 2010. Still no specifics on that front. So looking at China, though, overall, pretty strong, even though overall, you know, the China market has been volatile, especially with that new GDP number out just not too long ago. Yeah, Jason, you're the, you're the Mashable guy. I mean, you have the insight into the, you know, sort of the trend and the specific and all the gossip inside this. What do you think about the idea that they don't want to break out the watch specifically doesn't it just make people more suspicious or more negative on it because it feels like they're hiding something I mean a little bit you know it would be nice to know the numbers and if they were that good I think that we'd see them I mean, them not being public does make me you know, a little paranoid that maybe they're not as good as they'd hoped but at the same time when you look at the revenue uh, situation here and how much money they're producing like even if they were really selling a ton of phones it's not gonna hit their bottom line too hard so the, the watch is, is kind of like a fun consumer thing and it's a fun thing to like look you know forward with and you know, you know what could be the future of Apple but for you know, it's it's short to medium term business. It's it's not too much. Before. Yeah, Jason Rotman. I mean, the phone refresh and you know whether it's upgrading or bringing out the new ones or a new model or everyone that's in the phone chain. It seems like th this just continues to be a fabulous revenue stream. Exactly. I mean, you have some of the smartest investors in the world love it. Carl Icahn calls it the best annuity there is. It's just, it's, it's you just, you just collect income once every two years at most on repeat forever. And people are going to continue to always upgrade their phones. And as the world gets wealthier, as central banks stimulate their economy more, a la Europe, a la China, Apple's going to continue to sell phones at record pace. Yeah, Jonathan, how much does it depend? I mean, you mentioned the Fed. He mentions what's going on around the world. I mean, it, we've heard Apple before being called the hedge fund hotel where you just check in your money and you leave it there and and you know at, at some well, point i guess you have, go ahead it's, yeah. it's a cult stock, Melissa. I mean, this is a stock that people, will, they, they would sell their probably their children more than they'd sell Not shares me. of Apple if they've held them for a long time. I keep my children you know well, most been, of them. 
Go ahead. They've been smartly rewarded for holding on to it. So this, I wouldn't even say it's a hotel, but it's a cult stock. The problem is, is that in my estimation, it's no longer a growth stock anymore. Wonderful company, growing company, but you look at a stock trading yeah. at 12, 13 times earnings. It's looking more like a washed up utility than tomorrow's big growth opportunity. Mm -hmm. Joe, on the other hand, the numbers are strong. And what's interesting, the CFO just came out and said that he saw no slowdown in China. That, that says a lot about Apple, but it says a lot about China too, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. What you see here is the luxury consumer, the middle class who wants to be a luxury consumer. They are really parking their money in an iPhone. It's seen as a status symbol. You see with the sell it, you know, $12.52 billion up 99% year over year. That is very strong for Apple in China. So you may see as luxury goods not do as well in China. People are spending more on mobile phones, uh, but the growth there is still pretty strong overall. We also see that Tim Cook is saying that, you know, renewal is not there yet. There's still a lot right. of phones that still have not been upgraded. So he expects to see stronger numbers going forward. Too. Jason, I'm wondering if this is good news for other tech companies that are that are concerned about China. Well, yeah, I mean, if you if you use this as a proxy to say that China's not, you know, having the kind of consumer slowdown that some people might have feared, then absolutely. I think that there's a lot of boardrooms right now that are breaking down these numbers and saying like, hey, you know, things might be OK for the next you know, few years. Jonathan, could this affect other stocks? The fact that it, they didn't see any slowdown in China, could it affect even stocks that have nothing to do with technology? It will, David. I mean, as you talked about, I mean, Apple is so much a part of the entire market. It's 12 percent of, of the entire Nasdaq. So it will set the trend that certainly most technology stocks will be related. And to your point, I think the fact that China, at least now, doesn't seem to be too much a worry. Well, is it a good indication that consumption is not about to suffer? And, you know, the Nasdaq's only a couple percent from its all time high. That's bullish. And yeah. Apple up after hours is bullish as well. Jason, Robin, you know, one thing I have to say is it always amazes me the number of people walking around with Apple devices and the latest Apple devices. I mean, I was talking to someone yesterday who had just paid $500 to upgrade his phone. And oh. you're sort of like, are you sure you can afford that? You know, I mean, people <laughs> really throw a lot of money around to have the yeah. latest Apple device. And for a while you thought, well, not everybody can afford this phone. You know, it's so expensive. Their price point is so high. They have so many fancy things. But then you look around and, and everyone's got them. It's amazing to me the disposable income that I feel like people can't necessarily afford that they're spending on these products. Well, you know, each it's a case by case uh, scenario whether one person can afford it or not. And secondly, it's like from a psychology standpoint, I mean, this is why these super luxury companies, whether it's Ferrari, Porsche, come out with neckties that cost $100 because people buy them because they want to be associated with 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 a, a luxury brand. And furthermore, there's lease programs, so people people can afford these phones. They're not they're not that high. Okay, Joe, go ahead. You have more info for us? Yeah, we're looking at the tablet sales here and we continue to see a slide there which is going to be a pain point for Apple. Tablet sales fell for a seventh straight quarter. They're down about 20% in terms of units. And what we're seeing here is, remember, the new Apple uh, iPad Pro is going to come out next month, I believe. And so if right now we're already seeing this slump in iPad growth, and it's not quite the notebook computers that Apple is actually very well known for. Those do re reasonably well. What does this mean for this iPad, which, of course, it is sort of oriented towards that enterprise community and business yeah. uh, business people but still what does this mean for the long term so what are they going to do about this so we're going to talk we're going to hopefully going to hear from ceo tim cook about this on the earnings call in just about 20 minutes okay yeah we're going to talk about that some more